you are a proud Jew. You love Israel and the Jewish people, which makes me not understand how you could want to do something like free settlement activity or give away Judea and Samaria, or as you may call it, the West Bank. That's the part that I truly don't understand because where does the word Jew come from if not Judea, the Jewish people? That's who we are. That's our very identity. They call uh, settlers mit nachlim. This comes from the word nachala, which is not inheritance, but it's heritage. Heritage is something that you can't just give away as opposed to inheritance. This is who we are. And it's also just an issue of justice. And as a lawyer, you're an advocate for justice. We have 1.5 million Arab Israeli citizens in Israel. Yet if there's a Palestinian state, there can't be one Jew anywhere. Your turn. Uh, thank you very much. I certainly understand your concerns and those considerations. Uh, since 1973, I have been opposed to Israel settling civilians uh, on the West Bank in, in Judea, Samaria, Yehuda Vashomron. I understand the importance of that land to the Jewish heritage, but people are more important than land. Peace is more important than property. Uh, certainly in the Jewish tradition, pikuach nefesh, the saving of life, is uh, at the uh, essence of our religion. It's attributed to Harav Soloveitchik that he once said that if it even took a single Jewish life to recover the Kotel, the most important aspect of Jewish heritage, it would, it would not be uh, worth it. So I'm in favor of people, not places. Um, I do believe that the Israelis made a mistake in 1967 by not accepting the Alon plan, which would have consistent with 242 of the Security Council resolution, which I played a tiny little role in helping to draft. Professor Dershowitz, and Professor Dershowitz, I'm sorry, I can hear you, but uh, the, it's now gone to my turn. But uh, so I, I understand that you have spent many years working for that. And when you say people are more important than places, I definitely identify with that humanist uh, emotion and, and feeling that you have. But I actually believe that when we're talking about people, Judea and Samaria, holding on to Judea and Samaria, which not only is the right, right for biblical and historical, but also for military reasons to save lives. When we look what happened after we gave away Gaza, then look, I mean, the whole country is now within reach. You remember the story about Ariel Sharon and Bush of the helicopter, and Ariel Sharon says, without Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, Israel's nine miles wide. And Bush says, nine miles wide, we have driveways longer than that in Texas. And we really, do, we do, I'm from Texas, I can tell you, it's indefensible. So, so uh, to, to be point, able right? to defend the Jewish people and save lives, I understand, but right now it's just, it goes 1-1, one, one, I apologize. But uh, so what I'm trying to say is that it's not only for uh, historical and biblical reasons, but again, it's for, for saving lives. When you want to go back to 73, I agree. We should have at the time annexed Judea and Samaria fully and totally. That's what I believe. But we didn't, and we are where we are now. So we have to act with truth with truth and with justice and actually with dignity. Sometimes I wonder, like, as a Jew, how can you believe in God and believe in our right to be in this land and also see the greater context that this is not about Judea and Samaria. The PLO was founded in 1964. Were they founded to liberate the settlements of 1967? No, they want to liberate every square inch of Israel because all of the world is divided to them into Dar el Harb and Dar el Islam the world of the sword, and the world that is already under Muslim rule. And for Israel to go from being under Muslim rule to Jewish rule means that Allah is not the ultimate God and Islam is not the ultimate religion. And that's what this all boils down to. It's a religious war and a spiritual war. So if this really was about land, then maybe there's something for us to even talk about. Not that I would, even if it was just about the land, I would not be willing to surrender it. But it's not. This is about the survival of the Jewish people and having an independent Jewish state. So that's how I wonder how you could possibly take this stance, knowing the greater context of what this conflict is really about. Please, Professor. Well, you're confusing uh, civilian settlements with the military security of Israel. Uh, most Israeli generals will tell you that civilian settlements make it harder to defend Israel, not easier to defend Israel. The Alon plan would have maintained a military occupation. I don't believe you ever end military occupation until there's peace. And I would never uh, suggest uh, peace with the Palestinians that didn't include a significant military presence in the Jordan Valley. What I'm talking about are civilian settlements that need today to be protected by massive numbers of Israeli troops that are better used to protect Israel's borders from Hezbollah and Hamas. I would never suggest a unilateral withdrawal, such as was done in Gaza. In fact, I was with General Sharon, uh, Prime Minister Sharon, shortly before his death, and he was actually thinking about unilateral withdrawal 
from some of the settlements on the West Bank. I would not agree with that. I also agree with land swaps. Um, my, my own uh, view is that in the end, uh, land swaps would result in uh, Israel maintaining, obviously, Gilo, Malaya, Dumim, and probably also the Etzion Bloc and uh, the uh, uh, areas, uh, um, uh, Ariel and other areas, but in exchange for other uh, land. Uh, the, the key issue, though, is democracy. Israel must be a Jewish state and a democratic state. It can't be both if it maintains control over uh, millions of Palestinians and doesn't allow them full citizenship. If it allows them full citizenship, then we have a binational state, which ultimately will become yet another Islamic state, not a Jewish state. I want to see Israel be a democratic state in which every single person who lives there has the right to vote, and I want to see it maintain its character as a Jewish state, not a religiously Jewish, as the nation state of the Jewish people based on uh, Jewish heritage, but secular principles of, of governance. Uh, and I think that will make Israel stronger militarily. It would make Israel more acceptable to the international community. It would make my job as a defender of Israel a lot uh, uh, easier. It would make Israel right uh, in the sense that it wouldn't be trying to control the lives of other people involuntarily. So the challenge I put to you is how can Israel maintain its character both as a democratic strong ally of the United States, Israel's strongest uh, ally is the America, and America is, uh, Israel is America's strongest ally. How can it maintain its democratic character and its Jewish character while having settlers and controlling um, millions of Arabs? I don't want to ever see the West Bank uh, Juden line. I don't want to see any Jew who has the right to live yeah. there, live there, but as a Professor, it's, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, so first of all, uh, when you say you don't want to see the West Bank Judenrein, I think that's the right word because that's essentially what it would end up being. Even if it wasn't enforced, no Jew in their right mind would stay there because they would be massacred and slaughtered. Listen, anywhere in Israel, Arabs can go freely walk around. If I go into Ramallah, my chances of survival, if I'm a religiously dressed Jew, would be the same as Auschwitz. Uh, again, we're talking about pragmatism and secularism and practicality when they're standing up and screaming justice, this land is ours. I think we really need to be asking ourselves that question. Justice-wise, is this land ours? If we don't have a right to Hebron, to Hebron, then what is our right to Jerusalem? What is our right to Tel Aviv? That's what this comes down to. And when you're talking about boots on the ground, as civ uh, not civilian, but military presence there, as a soldier in the army and in reserve duty, I'll tell you that it only is sustainable if people are living there. Boots on the ground is not something that is a sustainable reality. And as a soldier, I would be happy and honored to give my life to defend Judea and Samaria and the brave Jews that live there, because this is who we are. This is our identity. I think that's what we need to be discussing, not the practical solutions. The political thing has already proven futile. Well, why do the vast majority of Israelis disagree with you? The vast majority of Israelis believe that the future of Israel is roughly within the 1967 borders with land swaps. They uh, support a two-state solution. The prime minister of Israel supports the two-state solution. He has said that Israel has to make uh, substantial sacrifices in terms of uh, being up settlements and property. Uh, the, the consensus in Israel, the widespread consensus in Israel and among supporters of Israel is that a pragmatic solution has to be worked out which affords the people of Palestine democratic control over their own institutions and their own people, and the Jewish nation of Israel control over its own people. In life, you make compromises. This should not be resolved as a religious dispute as to whether our God or their God gave Hebron to the Jewish people or to the Palestinian people. It should be resolved politically. It should be resolved with compromise. It should be resolved primarily with Israel security in mind, and the people who make decisions about Israel security are the elected officials of Israel and the military leaders of Israel. And I think the vast consensus there is that a two-state solution uh, is best for Israel, is best for world peace, is best for the Palestinian people, and is best for justice. Professor Dershowitz, there's a saying, when an honest man learns he's mistaken, he either ceases being honest or ceases being mistaken. I think this path of political pragmatism and negotiation has proven false, but thank you.